Hey, what's up? This is Jake. You're in Jake's shop. Um, took a little break from the Camaro. I've got a little project I wanted to kind of show and I throw a little video up on. Um, I had a buddy do some really cool stuff and I'm going to, you know, as a lot of my videos kind of show, I've got a, little, a lot of Milwaukee tools and I really love them. Um, so I devoted kind of a cool sign project, um, art project that I thought I'd show a little clip on and a little video, do a little video on. Uh, still working on the Camaro and there will be a video coming up on that on the... Um, uh, lizard skin applications are going to be doing to it. But in the meantime, uh, you know, summer's been great. Summer's been crazy. And uh, a lot of gardening and boating and camping and all of that fun stuff that happens in the summer. So now that fall's here, I'll really be able to start really getting on the Camaro and doing a lot more videos for it. But in the meantime, I thought I'd do a little cool little one here. My buddy over at Dirty Steel Design um, did a sign for me. There's quite a bit more to it than... Um, you might think so I, I thought I'd show a couple little things on what I'm gonna do and uh, what I'm after you know I've got my Milwaukee stuff back there and I really always wanted a really cool piece of art that hung on the wall um, that kind of showcased some of my tools so I'm, a, I'm, I'm just a tool nut and uh, go from there so I'll show you some clips on what I'm gonna do and uh, how I'm gonna put this uh, piece of art together and kind of what he did to help me out with this process Okay, so what you see here is uh, a piece of art, uh, a sign that um, I have ha I've had made. Uh, my buddy Sean over at Dirty Steel Design actually designed this in AutoCAD 3D. And what you see here was burned out on his plasma table. Um, it's a really slick little plasma table that has, um, you know, it, it, it just cuts so fine and there's hardly any dross coming off of this. It's really going to be easy to clean and make nice. This is a two-piece sign. I'm actually going to do uh, something a little bit different with this. I'm going to elevate it. I'm going to use riff nuts. I'm going to elevate it and paint the two pieces separately. So this will be red. The underside will be white. And I'm going to put LED lighting and attach it to the back side of this. Um, it's going to look really killer, I think, when it gets on the wall. But, you know, Milwaukee and Fuel and everything else they've got going on with their brushless technology has just been phenomenal for me. I'm really happy with uh, what they've done with their stuff and um, just, really, just really like it. So I thought I'd showcase it. This is a Chevrolet symbol. I'm a, kind of a GM nut and uh, thought I'd kind of mix the two because I'm kind of a car guy, as you know. And... Um, make it something of my own. So he designed this. He did it in CAD and 3D. This has all been burned out on his plasma table. It's just beautifully burned out. All the the corners are just very fine. All these nice sharp edges. Uh, you know, it, it takes a really nice plasma cutter and a plasma table to do a lot of that work. So there's been a lot of work to get to this point, um, just because of his design abilities and his plasma table abilities has really made this piece what it's going to be in the end once I get done with it. So it's hard to see right now, but I'll kind of show you parts of the process. You know, I, I have a couple others um, on my walls. You can see my, you know, Seattle Seahawks symbol. I did some bluing on that. Um, I actually have a nicer one in my house, but that was kind of some of my first attempts. Uh, just some different, different artwork. One of my favorite pieces of art that we did a while back is my Firebird. Um, you know, Trans Am symbol. This is actually a really big piece. Um, and it's just standard uh, steel. You know, it's flat black on the back and stainless on the front. It's a two piece. It's been riveted together and put on my wall. Um, I, I really love that piece of art. That is a big piece. And I really like it. But this sign is going to be a little bit more intense than what I'm about to make now. It's going to be a two piece with the LED lighting. So, um, first things first, I need to mark this sign out for where I'm going to put the, the, um, the bolts. So basically I'm going to have bolts along the edge of this and it's going to be, they're actually going to be stanchion bolts. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a riff nut on the back side. Um, I'm going to put a rod in and then use a two piece nut to elevate the sign about two inches up off of this. But it, before it's cleaned, before it's masked off for painting, and I, I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm just going to, you know, clean it up, use thinner, do some primer, lightly sand, repaint it. It's just going to be a rattle can job. It's an indoor sign. Don't need to get too crazy with it. It's not going to be a super, super crazy paint job, but it'll it'll do the job. Uh, with when I get done with it, it should be pretty good. But <clears throat> first I need to do is I've marked out these edges three quarters of an inch back um, to get my offset back. And then I'm going to put, you know, there'll be bolts in the corner, there'll be bolts halfway point and bolts here. And first I'll pre-drill my smaller holes, eighth inch holes, where I want these bolts. And then come back and kind of show you what I'm going to do with the rift nuts um, to hold this off of the sign. 
and kind of at least get the, the fabrication points of it done before I even bother with trying to prep for paint. So next step you'll see this is I'll have all these marked out, I'll get my holes pointed, you know, I'll just put them in ahead of time, um, clamp these together and drill both pieces once for the, the holes, the, the pilot holes for the bigger holes that'll go in afterwards. Uh, using 5 16 inch uh, rod and nuts and washers to put this together and elevate it off of itself um, before I go to paint. Okay, so the next part of this process, um, I went ahead and pre-drilled just with a little eighth inch drill bit all the, the corner, all the spots where I'm going to want my bolts to hold this sign um, apart. And a couple things I did do, um, you know, I used a punch for a lot of this and just every time I made a mark, I went ahead and punched it ahead of time and then just used my uh, eighth inch drill bit to, to pre-drill the holes. You know, the punch kind of makes it just so the drill bit doesn't slide around. You just punch it where you want your spot. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll grind these off a little bit, make sure they got an okay point on them before I go punching stuff. And that just gives me my good layout and I've got some really nice holes ahead of time that I don't have to worry about. I went ahead and clamped it ahead of time. Um, you know, I went ahead and marked this back three quarters of an inch. You know, when you're marking signs or anything, um, there's a little trick to, to marking these lines nice and straight that is kind of quick. Uh, you can use a tape measure. And I don't think I'm going to be able to really show this with one hand, but um, I will attempt to. So what you do, you know, a lot of framers and whatnot, they'll hold the tape measure with their hand like this and then scribe the edge just like that. And they'll use their other hand to hold the pen at an angle. You know, most tape measures have that little notch in them. You put the head of a pen right in that. So if you have two hands available, which I don't right now, I'm holding the camera, you can just put the head of the pen with the other hand in that side and then just hold your finger lightly. You know, you're not pressing too hard on this edge. You'll cut your finger. Um, but that's a really quick way to mark edges of things. Wood, sheetrock, hardy board, whatever you're making, metal. Um, to, to make a cut. You know, a lot of times I'll wear gloves. This is actually 16 gauge galv, or not galvanized, but um, black iron steel. So it's not super thin, but um, if you're using thinner metal, it would cut you really easily. And luckily this, this burned edge is so nice that, <coughs> excuse me, I don't have to worry too much about getting cut, but always something that you should probably be wearing gloves. So yeah, I got those holes pre-marked. Now I'm going to use rift nuts and I've showed these in the past on other videos, but they're, they're really cool. They actually sandwich in and they give you a spot to bolt something into, kind of like a rivet, but um, that back there is my rift nut gun. It uh, has a couple different ends. This is a 5 16 so that's what I'm going to use on this sign. This is the biggest one that I think that rift nut can actually handle the gun. They make <coughs> bigger ones, but um, I'll go ahead and pre-drill these. Now the rift nuts are going to require a slightly bigger hole than the rods that are going through the top. Now I'm going to sandwich this thing in with a cup with uh, lock nylocks. Uh, I'm going to put one on the back side and then one on the top side with a washer and that'll sandwich the top in and keep my equidistance apart. The back side just going to have a rift nut in it. Um, there's not a whole lot holding the rift nut steady. It's just a sign but I'll probably put a little Loctite in them or something. Uh, probably want to get these in for the most part before I paint um, but next thing, next time you'll see this, I'll go ahead and pre-drill things. So now I've got these nice little eighth inch holes. I can go ahead and use, I like Unibits a lot. I use them a lot. Um, Harbor Freight has them pretty cheap. They don't last forever, but they're so cheap that it's not a big deal. The backside on the, these particular rift nuts, I think are going to require uh, about a 7 16 inch hole. So I'll bring it to that level. The rod itself only requires like a 3 8 inch hole, even though it's a 5 16 inch rod. Um, that'll give me a little bit of wiggle room, very little, but it'll give me a little bit of room and then I'll bolt the sign together. So next time you see this, I'll go ahead and uh, pre-drill the holes. The front side, like I said, will be slightly smaller because that's only got a rod through going through it. The back side will have the rift nut going through it. So I'll go ahead and I, you know, I use clamps to hold together and I just pre-drilled the front and the back piece simultaneously so they're in the exact same position. Um, kind of keep everything where it needs to be and then, um, I'll go ahead and drill these out next, um, clean them out a little bit, just because when you're drilling sheet metal, um, I don't think you're going to be able to see that, but sometimes there's just a little bit of metal that sticks out there. So I'll use a flap for this real quick, clean it up, um, probably my orbital too, I don't need to get too crazy with this, it's just a sign, but I'll probably orbital it, 
um, after I drill it. And then I'll go ahead and I'll flip the camera around and show how these rip nuts work because they're really cool. I've done it in the past, but I'll go ahead and do it again because um, they're just so versatile. I'll use it on a sign. And actually, don't have enough to do this whole sign. I'll order a couple more on Amazon. They're, they're not too bad. And um, go ahead and then paint it. And then we'll finish it here shortly. Okay, so next part of this process, I went ahead and uh, grinded a little bit of this off, and, and it's really grind. I actually used uh, a flapper disc. You know, I use a flapper disc for a lot of different things. Um, the plasma cut was so nice on this, it didn't really take much, but um, I've got a little flapper disc on my quarter inch grinder that works really well. And I, I know I've showcased that in the past, but it's just a little roll lock design, and it's a, it's a flapper disc. And they work really good for the light grinding type stuff, especially when you're dealing with just a little bit of slag from a light plasma cut, um, the burrs from my drill bits coming through the backside, um, just kind of clean them up a little bit. So I did that first, I went ahead and drilled these out to the right side. So now it's time for the rift nut. Um, like I said earlier, it's a little bit like a um, rivet, but it's it's got threads inside it and um, it, it basically sandwiches in between the metal this back side of the metal curls up and it allows it to sandwich in the metal and it gives you threads to um, thread something into a bolt and what have you so this is a astro 1442 rift nut gun um, there is other stuff online about this thing i've used it for quite a bunch of different things so this is another thing i thought i'd just show again but um, you've got different ends and, the, and these tips will screw on and off of this thing and allow you to do different sizes. 5 16 like I said, I believe it's the biggest for this. That's what I'm using for this sign. Um, more just for aesthetics, you know, I want a little bit bigger nut on that thing. So uh, I think it'll go a long way. But so you have the rift nut gun, um, you take the rift nut and you thread it on, you know, make sure the, the levers are all the way out and you, you know, because basically once this is all the way threaded on, like a rivet gun, you just press this back and it sandwiches that right between the metal. So I'll be using 20 of these because there's 20 holes on this, but you thread it all the way down while the levers are out, it's ready to go. So now I put it in the hole, squeeze it tight, sandwiches in the metal. I'll have, like I have here on this sign, I've got 20 different holes on this sign that I'll need to fill with rift nuts. Um, it's pretty straightforward, you know, drill them the right size, you put it in, and you, Clamp it. In. Make sure you have pressure down, um, and then clamp it. And then pull it back out. And the back side, um, we just unthread. So, you know, I've used this thing for quite a few different things, and not on an art project yet. But I think it'll be um, really nice. You know, it's going to allow me to offset this sign the way I need to. Like I said, I want to do a, about a two-inch offset on this sign. So now you can see that that is sandwiched hopefully you can see that but it's sandwiched in the back side of the metal um, and on the front side so it can't go anywhere that's basically a threaded outlet or outlet that i can uh, attach stuff to uh, i went ahead and bought some threaded 5 16 cents rod from the hardware store um, nothing special what i'm going to do with this stuff is i'm going to go ahead and cut it to about two inches long with my porta um, and then once i've got a bunch of two inch threaded outlets here i'll thread them in and that will uh, allow me to get the offset I need for the sign. Um, like I said earlier, I'll be using two different nuts. One nut will go on the back side of the upper portion of the sign, and the other one will go on the top side with a washer. It'll look industrial, uh, won't be painting these. Um, so really what I'm gonna do is prep these for paint next. Um, I don't have all my rift nuts, I don't have enough. So I'll order those. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and prime them and paint them. You know, you're not gonna see these rift nuts. They're zinc coated, it's an indoor sign. Not too concerned about them being painted. Um, you know, if this was an outdoor sign or something, you'd probably wanna use stainless steel and blah, 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 much other stuff, but uh, if you want it to last forever. But I don't, it's an indoor sign, so I'm not too concerned about it. I'm gonna go ahead and use rift nuts I do have. I'm gonna clean this up really well. Uh, I'm just going to do an orbital sander on it with a light 120 grit just to clean the metal up and then I'll do a couple of wipes with thinner and then throw my primer on it. So uh, at this point I don't know if there's a whole lot of the show. I am going to cut this rod with my porta band, uh, Milwaukee porta band that I love and it will, you know, I'm just going to measure these back and chop them, you know, two, two inch sections, boom, 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 boom. And, and porta band is really nice to cut. You can cut these with saws. you can cut them with 
angle grinders, little cutoff wheels, what have you. The, the Porter Band makes it a little easier because it's a nice, clean, slow cut, and usually I don't end up burring the edges of these threads to where I need to break out a, a, a die set or something to, to re-thread it properly. I can still get the, the nut to thread on pretty easily. There's actually a couple other really cool tools out there. If you do burr the edge of a threaded uh, rod or nut or, or excuse me, bolt, um, it, it's a cup that drills over the top and it, it chamfers it perfectly so that it'll always guarantee you a, a right thread. Um, don't have one of those. <laughs> so uh, because I have a quarter band, I don't do a ton of this sort of thing. Don't need one. Um, I'll go ahead and finish cleaning these off camera. Next time you see these, I'll go ahead and, you know, when you're painting anything, cleanliness is everything. So uh, after you have sanded it down, cleaned it up, I'll blow everything off with my air hose. I'll mask my table off because I don't really want it covered in paint, uh, just with some paper. And then I'll go ahead and shoot some primer on it. Um, so the next stage of this game is I'll probably go ahead and show the final assembly for the most part. I'll, I'll uh, go ahead and prime it. I'm just using rab can, you know, it's just Rust-Oleum stuff, nothing special, Home Depot special, what have you. Uh, I probably don't need primer, but it's cheap and I figure I might as well just add some primer to it. And then the front of the sign will be red, um, kind of the industrial Milwaukee slash everyone has red tools sort of thing, craftsmen, what have you. A lot of red is insignia in the middle of automotive stuff. So when got some red. Um, there's a couple different shades. I, this is, I just guessed, I don't really care. It's close enough. This is Regal Red from Australia. I think it'll be close enough to everything else I've got. I'm not trying to be a perfectionist with that. The back side is gonna be white front. It'll be elevated on here uh, with some LED lighting behind it. So it, it, it should look really cool, but this will be red. Uh, the back side of this I'm gonna paint white and this I'll paint white. That way, when the LEDs are going to be attached to the back of this, I will it'll reflect back and hopefully pop through the Milwaukee so that you get the white Milwaukee symbol with the red uh, Chevrolet symbol, of course. But, you know, Milwaukee. <laughs> it's got the red around, white through the center. So trying to kind of mimic the same type of situation that I've got with my tools and all of my tools. And, uh, yeah, we'll just see how this turns out. So I'll, I'll finish cleaning up. I'll show a little bit of the final touches up next, and we'll go from there. Thanks. Okay, so I figured I'd show the next steps. I um, went ahead and painted these. You know, the primer dries really quick. Um, I've got a heater in here and I've got exhaust fans evacuating everything. So I was able to get the primer on. You know, I didn't even bother sanding the primer. It's a, it's a sign that's seen from a distance. This isn't an automotive paint grade by any means. Um, but it, it's, it'll be great. It'll, be, it'll look really good actually when it's on the wall. So this is the back side of the sign. It's gonna go ahead and be gloss white. Um, and the, uh, everything's primed before then. Went ahead and did the orbital sander thing. Just uh, It was actually 220 grit. Uh, ran it through and then wiped everything down, blew off everything, masked my table off. Um, you know, this is the, just a gloss red, nothing special. Um, you know, there's slight imperfections in it, but nothing, nothing major for a sign. No one will ever be able to see that. Um, at least for the type of thing I'm doing. This is a shop sign. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna let this dry overnight. And then come back probably tomorrow. Um, when I got my rift nuts, finish putting this thing together and really show the final product. You know, when you're spraying paint, a lot of times you're trying to keep the wet edge. Um, you know, like when you're using a spray gun, you're going back and forth. And, you know, trying to keep as even a flow as possible and continuing the wet edge along everything. And I went ahead and started low and then went high and then just did the whole thing. Um, this was almost a can of paint on this thing. I went ahead and kept it really wet. I usually try and rock the edge of dripping um, or running the paint just to get that really thick film. That way I don't have to do multiple coats. You know, when you're using rattle cans especially, trying to do multiple coats, um, more of a chance for crap to get in it, junk to get in it, and uh, trying, to, trying to limit that from happening as much as possible. You know, it's just a sign, but still. Uh, the back side of that sign you can't see right now because that is wet. But um, it's, it's gloss white as well. So the LEDs I've got, uh, this is a Home Depot special. You get these online as well. Uh, it's just LED strip lighting. And that will be actually adhered to the back with uh, a double-sided tape. I believe actually this kit 
these come with that. If not, um, I've actually got some really nice industrial tape, but these clip together. Um, they've got a lot of different accessories that come with it to Y branch it and connect it in different locations. Um, I think I'm gonna be running LED lighting across the bottom, the top, and then angles on each side. You won't see the LED lights, um, but when they do light up, it should reflect back and then it'll pop white through the center with the Milwaukee and the fuel going through there. So next step, I'll go ahead and cut my hardware, um, get everything ready and then show kind of some more of the final process of assembling the sign. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move my boxes up there to the side and then put the sign right in the middle, right above my Milwaukee uh, holder for all my tools. So uh, expect that to look pretty cool and uh, we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so second night, everything's dried up pretty well. Um, I've got my boy Kieran in here helping me out with the rift nuts, uh, finishing up that sign. I probably will touch them up with a little gloss white. Um, that way they kind of blend in a little bit, but that's going pretty smoothly. Um, this is the back of the front side of the sign. And what I've done here is this is just that LED kit from um, you know Home Depot. Um, nothing too special here, but it's kind of cool. These strips actually have adhesive backing on them. Should be enough. They're really, they don't weigh anything. So I've kind of just roughly laid them out where I want them to go. Make sure I've got the wire connectors. This particular kit came with a couple uh, two footers, uh, like a little six inch chunk and then a Y connector. So. I kind of just used that as a frame of reference to decide kind of how it made more sense to, to put it together, uh, lay it all out. So what I'll do next is now that I've plugged it in, confirmed it does work, um, I'm going to go ahead and adhere this, do these where I want them, and then just tie these loose wires will all get tidied up. So after it's all laid out, I'll wrap them up in a corner, zip tie them slightly, and I'll use some really strong double-sided adhesive tape to just hold the bundle of wire nice and tight to the back of the sign so you'll never see it. Uh, a little overspray on the back side, again, shouldn't make a difference um, you know I could have taken a lot of extra time and masked it off but again it's back of the sign should be plenty of reflection there for what I'm going for so anyways uh, we'll keep going on this process we'll cut some rods and uh, start bolting it together here next thanks okay this will be the last shot of the guts of that what this is going to do but now you can see I've got um, all the LED lighting strips are nice and stuck down um, went ahead and Coil the wire up. Now this is a double-sided tape. They actually make these really nifty hangers that you can actually zip tie and you can stick to things in zip tie. Um, I don't have any on me, so I'm just going to do it this way. But So this is a double-sided tape. You know, this Scotch 3M stuff, this is pretty heavy, heavy duty mounting tape. Um, you know, I bundled the wires up and it's, they're stuck. You know, you won't see any of this. It's fine. It's nice and coiled up. It'll be out of the way. Um, you won't actually be able to see any of these wires for the most part unless you get up under the sign, um, which it'll be way back up on the wall. So. Yeah, I got all those tucked up, out of the way. Uh, the cord will hang, you know, down and then get plugged in. Um, and so, yeah, well, uh, yeah, it, it looks like it's going to work pretty good. Um, there's, uh, we'll see how much it reflects back. I expect actually it'll work pretty good for this sign. And so next we'll bolt it together and see what it looks like. Okay, so we've got it complete here. I was able to um, get it on the wall um, where I want it. Backlighting looks really good in here. Um, it turned out really nice. You know, I ended up using all thread to offset the, um, um, from the rift nuts out. So you got a rift nut on the one side and then I double nutted. I put a nut on the back and the front side to kind of finish that, uh, installation. So I'll kind of show you, um, ended up using nylocks on the front, you know, and then the back. So yeah, you can kind of see that hopefully in the camera, there's a nut on the back and you know, there's 20 of them. So that took a little bit of time, but yeah, I, I can actually tie this into my, um, lights or not I've got outlets that are tied to my lights and also ones that aren't there was a switch but yeah it, it looks really good I, I'm pretty impressed with it actually I'm glad to be able to uh, do that but yeah you know that's complete darkness but uh, it turned out really good I, those LED should last a long time and if for some reason I do ever want to um, take them off um, you know I ever have to replace them I could always unbolt the sign but that's like probably, you know, 20 plus years from now. <laughs> um, at least that's the expectation on the lifespan of the LEDs. So yeah, hope, uh, hope you enjoyed that and we'll get the rest of my tools all cleaned up and organized. I've got some, um, other tools I get to play with now and I'm going to remount my boxes over to the side because I kind of like the way they look. So on to the Camaro now. So we'll clean this up and a couple weeks from now from posting this video, we should be able to get to finally get to that lizard skin stuff now that falls here. Thanks again.